All right, this is fifth grade, module six, lesson eight. And in this lesson, we're kind of twisting things around a little bit. This time, you're going to be given the rule. And as students, we're going to be generating the points given that rule. And once we have the points, then we can graph it. So let's get started. So what we've got here, it says, complete this table such that each y-coordinate is four more than the corresponding x-coordinate. So what that means is we have to choose some x values, and then the y-coordinate is going to be four more than whatever that x value is that I chose. So I get to choose any values I want. But making using um, a little common sense here, I see that my graph, the x coordinate, the x axis only goes up to 12, and the y axis only goes up to 12. So I'm going to do my best to choose values that stay within 12 so that I can graph them. So let's choose some nice, convenient, small numbers. Let's choose x is 3 x is 6, and oh, let's do x is 1. So the important thing is, I could choose any values I want. They don't have to go in order. So I, and I'm, But for strategic purposes, I'm choosing small values. So then it says the y-coordinate is 4 more than the x-coordinate. So that means our y-coordinate for 3 is 7. When the x-coordinate is 6, our y-coordinate is 10. And when our x-coordinate is 1, our y-coordinate is 5. And sure enough, the y-coordinate is always 4 more than the x-coordinate. So what are, what are our points? Our points are 3, 7, 6, 10, and 1, so there's our points, and we're going to plot those points. So let's plot it. So our first point, 3, 7, it's going to go, oh gee whiz, where is that going to go? Right there. There's 3, 7, because we've got 3 on the x-axis, 7 on the y-axis. So now we're going to do 6, 10. So that's going to be 6 on the x-axis, 10 on the y-axis, and that's going to put us right there. And then the last one, 1 on the x-axis, 5 on the y-axis, and that's going to put us right there. And then we can use a straight edge, uh, but I don't really have a straight edge, so I'm going to kind of zoom in and just be super careful here. And I can see that our line is going to look something like this. So that, boy, that's not straight at all, is it? Gee whiz, that's kind of ugly as all heck. Okay, so there is our, our line. And then, so I've plotted the points. I've used a straight edge. There it is. And then I can answer some questions. And in this case, it says give the, give the coordinates of two other points that would be on this same line, meaning it's going to follow the same rule. But we want really big x coordinates just for the heck of it. Okay, well, let's say... What if we choose an x-coordinate of 50? Uh, what would the y-coordinate be? Well, the y-coordinate would be 54. How about if we chose an x-coordinate of uh, 27? Well, if the y co x-coordinate is 27 and the y-coordinate always needs to be 4 more, well, that means the y-coordinate has to be 31. So here, we have three rules, and we are going to complete the tables for each of these three rules. So I'm going to zoom in, and it says, let's see, x is equal to y. So that's the rule. Well, that's pretty fun. That means if I choose any value of x, oh, let's choose 8, 7, and 2. I don't know why I chose those numbers. Um, actually, I know a little bit. I'm, I see that my x coordinates need to stay less than 15, and my y coordinate needs to stay less than 15. So that's really why I chose 
some reasonably small numbers. And we're going to zoom in. And so what are our y coordinates? Well, they're the same. 8, 7, and 2, because the rule was x is equal to y. So our ordered pairs, 8, 8, 7, 7, 2, 2. All right. And let's move to a new rule. One, y is 1 less than x. So I get to choose any values for x. Oh, let's choose, oops, I didn't need that parenthesis. Uh, let's choose 10. Let's choose 5. And let's choose 3. All right, so what are our y coordinates? Well, the y coordinate is always 1 less than x. 10 minus 1 is 9. 5 minus 1 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. And there's our coordinates. 10, 9, 5, 4, and 3, 2. And one more rule. So y is 1 less than twice x. So that means we're going to take our x, double it, and then subtract 1, and that gives us our y. So let's choose, oh, let's choose some small numbers because we're going to have to double it. So let's choose like 4, 5, and, and 2, I guess. All right, so y is 1 less than x doubled. So x times 2 is 8. 1 less than that is 7. 5. Well, 5 times 2 is 10. 1 less than that is 9. And 2. 2 doubled is 4. And 1 less than that is 3. So our ordered pairs, 4, 7, 5, 9, 2, 3. Now, the whole thing is, parents and teachers especially, um, Everybody's going to have different points because we're not all going to choose the same values for x. However, the really cool thing is, parents and teachers, when we graph our lines, regardless of the values that students chose for x, our lines should match. So parents and teachers, what you should do to correct your work, you know, have your students correct their work, you need to make one answer sheet, uh, one graph, you know, with all the lines on it, tape it to the window so that the sun is shining through, and then your students can take their worksheets and they should be able to put it up on the window uh, and your answer will shine through their paper and you will be able to see uh, the lines should be, they should line up, they should match up. And so that's kind of a fun way to see if your, your answer is correct. Have your students walk up to the window and put their paper right on top of your paper, which is taped to the window, and the answer should be perfectly lined up. I'm not going to graph because I think at this point you get the idea of how to graph. And then the idea is once we've graphed, let's use those graphs to answer these questions. Now, why are we doing this, teachers and parents? Well, we're doing this because this is a beautiful lead-in to all of the ratios and proportions that our students are going to be doing in sixth grade next year. So this, while it might seem a little odd in a fifth grade lesson or fifth grade, yeah, fifth grade book, it's essential for leading students into what they're going to be learning in sixth grade. And that wraps up fifth grade module six, lesson eight. They're generating their points using a, a rule, and then they're going to plot those points to make a line.